everyone, welcome to Pai's Kitchen. So today I am venturing into Burmese cuisine and I'm very excited because back when I used to live in San Francisco, there was a super popular restaurant called Burma Superstar. I had always wanted to go in and try Burmese food, which I'd never tried before, but there was always a long lineup and I never could get in during those years. Fast forward to today, they released a cookbook and I thought, hey, now I can just make it at home. So this is a recipe based on that book with my, some of my modifications, but it's such a great recipe to enter Burmese cuisine with because it's simple, it's easy, and it looks so, so amazing. It's a fish and tomato curry scented with turmeric. It's quick, delicious. Can't wait to share it with you. Let's get started. So let's talk fish first. So I am using cod here, but you can use any kind of mild flavored white fish. I would go with something a little more substantial so that it doesn't fall apart in the curry. Like don't go with sole, for example, it's just gonna disintegrate, okay? So I'm going to marinate the fish with some turmeric powder and some salt and give this a quick toss. And in many, many Southeast Asian cuisine, you'll notice that we like to pair fish with a lot of herbs because herbs will help mitigate any sort of fishy smells or flavor. So in Thai cuisine, it's the same way. When we cook with fish, there's always a lot of herbs that go into it. So we'll let that sit just until you're ready to use it. So do this as the first thing. And now let's make the curry paste. So unlike a Thai curry paste, you don't need this to be a super smooth paste. We're gonna keep it kind of chunky. So definitely can throw it in a food processor if you have one. I forgot to bring mine today, so we're gonna go old school. So I'm going in first with some lemongrass and some chilies. So I always go first with the toughest stuff. As I said, it doesn't have to be super fine. Now I'm gonna go in with some garlic and ginger. Oh, it's starting to smell good right about now. All right, so once you get about here, now I'm gonna go in with my shallots. I'm putting lots and lots of shallots in, um, and you really just need to crush these. I like actually having pieces of shallots. And this is when I wish I'd brought my bake mortar and pestle. <laughs> yes, I know, this is completely overflowing, so please use a bigger mortar and pestle if you've got one. And with the shallots, all I'm looking for is all the layers are split apart, it's no longer in the big chunks. And that's it, let's get cooking. All right, so I'm gonna start by sauteing that herb mixture that we just mixed. So Burmese cuisine, Burmese curries tend to have more oil than you're used to. So go ahead and put in a little bit more than you might be used to, but we're not adding any like coconut milk or anything else fatty. So it's a very lean curry otherwise. All the herbs goes in, all right. And now you're gonna let this saute and give it quite a bit of time. Allow the onions to really soften and sweeten. Onions, shallots. Same, same, but different, right? Keep the heat on the medium to medium low side because you don't want the garlic to burn. And I'm also gonna add just a little pinch of salt and that'll help draw out the liquid from the shallots to help it soften more quickly. Mmm, oh. If you could only smell this stuff right now. So now my shallots, I keep wanting to call them onions. Shallots and garlic are wilted and translucent. I'm gonna go in with some shrimp paste. That's right, Burmese cuisine also uses shrimp paste. So this is the fermented shrimp paste stuff, not the orange oily stuff, okay? And just a little bit. You can put more if you'd like. And I'm just gonna smash that let it fry in the oil. Bloom the flavors of shrimp paste so it can perfume your home. <laughs> no, if you don't have it though, you can totally skip it and just add more fish sauce instead. All right, so now that the shrimp paste is broken up, I'm gonna go in with some dry spices. So I've got here some more turmeric powder and some paprika. In that goes for some nice color and aroma. Mmm. So you wanna give that literally 15 seconds just to bloom the flavor of the spices, but you don't wanna let it burn. So you're gonna stop it from burning by adding a whole bunch of tomatoes. Woohoo! So what I'm using for this is Roma tomatoes, which is great for sauces because they don't actually have that much water in them. So it won't take you as long to sort of cook it down. Beautiful, look at that. Mm. Now some seasoning. 
of course, we're gonna put some fish sauce. And so if you have experience with Thai food, Burmese food is going to not seem that difficult to you because there are many, many ingredient overlaps. And to bump up the acidity a little bit, I'm gonna add some tamarind. Now that does not look like there's enough liquid right now, but trust me, all those tomatoes will give it all up. So you're gonna give it some time. So now I'm gonna put the cover on and I'm gonna let this simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes, basically until the tomatoes are mushy and saucy and it starts to look like a curry sauce. Ta-da! Oh yeah. Look at that. Look how much more liquid is in this bowl now. And that's all tomato juice. We didn't add a drop of water, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna give this a taste for sweetness because you may not need to add sugar depending on the sweetness of your tomatoes. Mm. So just checking for balance. Think about is it a little bit too much on the tart side? I think it is, so I'm gonna add a teaspoon of sugar just to balance out those sharp edges a little bit mmm oh just look at that it's so beautiful all right so now the fish is going in all at once Woohoo! smother the fish in this sauce now because fish overcooks very quickly here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna close the lid and let it simmer for only three minutes. Okay, the fish won't be done at that point. And I'm gonna turn off the heat and let it sit in that residual heat for the next five to seven minutes so that it cooks more gently and the fish will cook more evenly and we won't overcook it that way. Alrighty, ooh, look at that. Now, ideally, ideally, if you can make this ahead of time, let it sit for an hour, two hours, the fish will have even more time to absorb some of that flavor. And so you wanna, you know, check the doneness of your fish first. You wanna take the chunkiest piece and then just push it apart to see if it flakes easily. And it does, that's done. Oh, can't wait. I'm just gonna finish it off with some fresh cilantro. Ooh, look at that. You don't want to stir this too much because the fish will fall apart. I'm going to pour that right over my rice. Look at all that. Now I'll tell you a secret. If you want something a little richer, more luxurious, add some coconut milk to this. I've done that once before. It was a beautiful transform transformation as well. So, you know, something to think about. Mm, look at that. Oh, that fish cooked up so beautifully. Oh, that smells so aromatic. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, the fish is perfectly done. I'm telling you that technique works for all sorts of fish dishes. It's rich and light at the same time. Like it's hard to describe. It's rich in aroma and fragrance, but it's also light in body and really refreshing. I could eat this all day, all day. Day. So the recipe, as always, will be on pieskitchen.com. If you've never had Burmese food before, I would love for you to try this beautiful dish out and let me know what you think. And when you do, make sure you send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an awesome recipe like this. And when you do, click that little bell icon as well so you get a notification when I post a new video. If you love the show and you want to support us, check out our Patreon link in the description box below. And I will see you next time for your next delicious adventure. The tart side, I think it is. So I'm going to add just a teaspoon of sugar to balance. Oh, that's salt. <laughs> I almost added a teaspoon of salt.